This Fitbit has been running out basically every 18 hours. I think the battery's totally knackered on it. Still, at least it's got enough charge now for me to have a quick run, because it's been a few days. We are currently in the middle of what I like to describe as an emergency rearrangement of plans. I thought we were going to go to Great Notley Park and do some cycling. However, what we're actually supposed to be doing is going to Hastings to see Gigi and Grandpa. So I have no idea how I managed to miss that off my to-do list for the day. Anyway, we're now packed, sort of. So we just need to get everything in the car and go. And grab a quick lunch en route as well. What a crazy disorganised rush. That doesn't sound like me, does it? Yes, I know, but we are in a really crazy, crazy rush. And also, just got the monkey emoji. That seems quite appropriate. And uh, on with the journey we go. So this has been a kind of quick splash and dash type thing because I, well firstly I didn't want to wake Jasper, so just short charging session, and secondly the only real reason I'm doing it is because I didn't know we were going anywhere today. So the car was just sitting at 70% which was, you know, aside from a 10 minute zap, all you need to go anywhere you want really. The other thing is I want to make sure that tomorrow I've got enough power to at least get back to Maidstone because there is a Chadamo in Hastings where we're going. Problem is I haven't checked whether it's working and it hopefully is but I wouldn't want to like you know trust my future journey plans to that. Hello, we'll go up and park, shall we? Wow, well, yeah, I would. Hey, Dad, Jazz. The Skype, I haven't. <laughs> I, I bought some Skype things. Fantastic. For, for, but I didn't want to go for Skype park. Do you want to go up here? In which case, I'll have to see you up, I think. Cause it's yeah. wide car and a narrow <laughs> gap. I know, I made it last time. I think I'll be all right. Okay. Cheers. All right, well, we'll. Um, we come and see you. Now, unfortunately, where we're staying today, parking is somewhat limited, and the only space they've got is taken up by my dad's new Morgan. So, I've come down to the seafront, and I'm going to leave the car here. Jazzy's currently up with my aunt and uncle at the top of the town. Yeah, it all makes perfect sense. Nice parking space. And I'm loving the weather here. Anyone think we were on holiday? Again. I tell you what, it's going to take a lot less time to go back to get the car. Look at that. That's what the skate shoes are for. Right. Well, today's been a bit disorganised and lacking substance so far. And that's because it is disorganized. We'll get to the substance in a bit. We are now going to see Grandpa's new car. Although we're going to see it without Grandpa, who's still down at the pub, which I'm quite sure he will be devastated about later when he realizes he's missed out on our viewing pleasure. You're gonna take it for a spin then? No, oh. I haven't got the key. Oh, I can see it. Right, it's, it looks quite similar to the old one. <laughs> Or am I missing it? Something? Of course, of course you're not. I mean, of course oh. you are. I am. You're missing something. It's not the same at all. The other one was dark grey. Uh, well, yes, <laughs> I figured the colour is different. Oh, look at the lovely light dashboard inside. I can't see it really. You should have it at the top of it. Yeah, it looks quite nice. It's number 25 and 60. So it's a limited 60. edition. And there were only 60 made of this particular thing to celebrate a. 60 years of Morgan? No, it was um... 60 years of noisy yeah, engines? You'll, you'll, have to, you'll have to ask that. It's something to do with the racing, a racing Morgan. It was 60 years since the first Morgan did 
did some kind of race, but I don't actually know what she did. I forgot. Right. You love to ask Dad. Well, it's very nice. People were saying they were, they were looking forward to seeing this, so... We could probably stick his booster seat in there and take him for a spin some point. I still think he should have just converted the old one to batteries. Thank you. Be a little more comfortable. It was perfectly comfortable anyway, actually. Oh. So it is officially Pim's o'clock. You say it's got gin in it? Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. It, it's a gin sling. But mm. of course. Oh yeah, no, I could drink these all night long. Today's vlog post has taken a serious turn for the worst. This is about my fifth glass of Pim's with gin. Oh, that's right. I'll sober up a bit later and then we'll talk EVs. Recently, and by recently I mean like yesterday and today, was it yesterday? I think it was. I basically had two times where I found myself not properly charged for the day's activities. And both times I fixed that problem with a bit of supercharger action. Now that is one of the reasons why I strongly believe that having the ability to use a local supercharger when you need to is essential. I mean, a supercharger is basically a bit like a petrol pump in that it can put a meaningful amount of energy into your battery pack in the space of as little as 10 minutes, you know, maybe 20. I think I was, when I, when I went to Brands Hatch, I was charging for about 20 minutes brought the car up from about 60% to about 75% and that extra 15% is what I needed to be able to comfortably complete my journey. Now, usually I could actually complete the journey. Like for example, today I stopped briefly at Maidstone on the way up here. And the reason I did that was because I don't know, still don't know if the Chadamo charger is gonna be working here or not. So I wanted to make sure I had enough energy to get back to Maidstone. You know, if I needed to. I probably could anyway, because I would get there with, I don't know, something like 10, 15 miles if I hadn't stopped already and charged a bit. But I didn't want to do that. I wanted to do a quick, literally, I think I was there for about 15 minutes, and then we, we set off. But again, it was enough to make the difference. That is something that you kind of learn with experience with an EV and you learn that it's not a good idea to have an empty battery because the problem with having an empty battery is it takes away all your options. Like tomorrow, maybe the opportunity will arise for me to move the car and get a quick Chadamo zap. Or maybe I'll think actually, you know what, I'm not gonna do that. What I'll do is I will go to this, I don't know, maybe it's an Ecotricity Chadamo point and we'll stop there and get a coffee on the way back. Or maybe go back up to Maidstone. I probably will do that, actually, if I'm being honest, because the supercharger will be quicker. And the plan is that tomorrow when we leave, I'm going to wait until Jasper's basically ready for bed and put him to sleep in the car. But if I'm putting him to sleep in the car, I can't leave him in the car to go and do anything else. So there's no point going to a service station because I can't use the services. So really, it becomes a, a question of get the power in there as quickly as possible. And that's where superchargers are brilliant. When your battery is fairly low, they just chuck the power in there. And it's one of those things that is improving. I don't think that, you know, EVs with a thousand mile range are ever really gonna make an appearance, honestly. I think they'll be possible. I just don't think that anyone will actually feel it's worth putting the money in to get them. A bit like, battery swap. In theory, it's fine and it's doable and it's doable now with a Tesla Model S. Then you can just pop the battery out the bottom, put a fresh one in, off you go. It takes about 90 seconds or something ridiculous. But when actually faced with the reality of having to do that, most customers were just like, you know what? No, it's going to cost some money and I'm perfectly happy to go grab a coffee. I just don't need to do that. It's a similar thing with having a thousand mile range EV. There'll be somebody who wants to have one of those, absolutely. But the vast majority of people are gonna to think to themselves, actually, I don't really wanna spend 30,000 pounds extra just to give myself not really any extra capabilities than what I've already got. Now, when it comes to rapid charging, you can't really beat a capacitor because you can charge a capacitor at more or less 
any kind of speed you want. And the reason that's interesting is because the researchers at Drexel University College of Engineering have come up with a kind of hybrid. It's sort of part capacitor, part battery. It's got a thin layer of something called MXE, no idea what that is. The idea is that it can accept a charge so quickly that you'd be able to charge your car in minutes, if not seconds. And I think ultimately, maybe not that specific development, but developments like that, I think, are one of the areas that is going to improve quite substantially. It's a, it's a great differentiator for different charging companies provided the car can accept the charge. And it's one of the things that will really close the gap between EVs and petrol and diesel. Because I don't really think a bigger battery is necessary. I don't use the vast majority of my battery capacity as it is. Partly because I want the battery to last as long as possible, but you know. Right, I think we're all going to bed now. So I hope you enjoyed today's blog post and found it interesting. If you have, remember to like it. Share it and subscribe if you haven't already and follow me on Instagram if you don't already. And I'll see you tomorrow for the next instalment of my daily vlog. Bye. Oh, I can see it. Yeah, what colour is this one? Do you like it, Jasper? Nah. <laughs> nah.